That intro seemed fitting since this is all about numbers. For the past two months, I've followed the progress of this device currently called the Alkalinity Monitor. I met up with Jim Welsh at Macna and he explains what he's accomplished thus far. This is brand new technology that can frequently test alkalinity and report those results to us via a controller device. I have to admit that some of this was even confusing to me. Jim is wearing the microphone, I'm a little harder to hear, but let's hear him explain how this thing operates. Jim, I've waited all weekend to see this presentation. I know you've given it a few times, but we have to give it to YouTube. Yep. So, Jim Welsh, you have invented what? <laughs> My alkalinity monitor. Mm -hmm. And so, I've been uh, chasing the dream of continuous alkalinity testing for a few years. And I've been testing out various ideas and going down various analytical blind alleys and, and methods that didn't pan out and didn't work. But this summer, I've, I've I've hit pay dirt, and so I finally found something that, that it will work and, and can be practically implemented. All right. And here it is. I, it was about four months ago this was only an idea, mm -hmm. and um, I set a goal in life of having a prototype, however crude, to bring to Magna, and I've accomplished that. It doesn't look crude at all. So just to <coughs> sum up quickly, Mm -hmm. It is a machine that will measure the alkalinity and then dose your alkalinity. It doesn't do any dosing. Okay. Oh, it what, it does, it no, what it does, what it what it does is it it will measure alkalinity with um, really nice precision. It's got accuracy and precision of 0 0.05 dKH, okay. and it can do it as frequently as every 10 minutes if you want, or as infrequently as you want, like daily or whatever. Is this the and reagent right here? That's the reagent. Yep. So if yep. I used it every 10 minutes, that bottle would be empty by tomorrow. Probably, yeah. But yeah. if I did it once every nine hours, that bottle be good for a couple for, of weeks. Exactly. Okay, yeah. all right, keep going. But, but what else it does, so uh, rather than, I mean, it displays the, the result on the screen, as yes. you can see here, but it also has a B and C connector in the back. All right. And it can interface with any controller that accepts a pH probe as an input. Okay. Um, it reports the signal as though it were a pH meter, but it's not, re it's not reporting pH, it's reporting alkalinity. Okay. If your tank has 7.8, 8.3 dKH, this thing right now is putting out the same voltage a pH probe would put out for a pH of 7.83. Uh, it also has a calibration method where uh, you can calibrate it to your controller's pH meter. Uh, it puts out a 7.0 and a 10.0 signal, just like uh, you would be putting your pH probe in, in the 7.0 and 10.0 standards. Got it. All right. Yeah. So it's measured. <coughs> How does the data get collected, the actual result? via the pH but, I mean, meter interface. But collected inside... In your controller. Like, so, for example, the Apex. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, then you can do whatever you want you know, with that information. You can graph it, you can send yourself alerts if there's problems, and if you choose to, you can, for example, control your two-part dosing or control your calcium reactor okay. or control Kalkwasser you know, with, with this information. All right, so why do we have four jars? Yeah, good question. So this is the sample tube. This is this is your aquarium or your sump. Okay. All right. This reagent. Right. We have RODI rinse water okay. for for rinsing at the end of the cycle, yep. and then you have waste. Okay. Right now, so right now, what it's doing is it just it just took in a, a milliliter of the sample water, and now it's putting in reagent. Uh huh. And then it will it'll do the test. incrementally do the reagent, you know, determine the you know where the 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 endpoint of the titration is yeah. and report that and then it'll rinse. Okay. Right now I have it running continuously during this demo. It'll, it'll just sit there and, and analyze, analyze over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I still don't quite get how it works with the controller. I know there's a port on the back for a pH probe. Right. But if I plug it into that, I have a pH probe sitting somewhere. No, 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 no. This is your, pretend this is your pH probe. Okay. And there's a, so a cable it's a that you're, cable. it's a, it, it's, it's a B and C cable. It's, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's B and C to B and C, B and C, to B and C. Which I never see. I see B and C to a pH probe. So well, yeah. Well, the cable the, will come with a unit. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> and, trying to understand and, my brain how this connected. And so you, so you connect this to the pH port on your controller. Right, got it. Okay. And then you relabel that port alkalinity. Right, alkalinity monitor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, perfect. And then this thing says, my alkaline has dropped a little. Mm -hmm. Then I can have my controller say, I would like you to dose a little. Yes. And I can have the controller, like, if alkaline is this level, this measurement, dose until it's this, I guess? Kind sure, of, yeah, I mean, yeah. Is you that could, how you're you programming, could, how you're suggesting it? I, 
I'm not going to tell people how to run their tanks, but not but that's sort of <laughs> not even as a guide. <laughs> but 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 sure, that's I, I've I've uh, implemented a program like that on my Apex. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and so so yes, that sort of thing is possible. I know you're trying to stay with one controller. That's the only one I've used. So I mean. But um. <laughs> Well, the point is that some people are going to be perhaps hesitant to actually control dosing right. with a device until they determine its reliability. Yes. I'm, I'm confident in its reliability, yeah. but, but you know, many people may want to simply have the information and monitor it yeah. and, and choose to still manually control these things. But if you wish to programmatically control your alkalinity using this information, yeah, that's absolutely could, could be done. Getting Jim to commit to my point was like talking to an engineer. As hobbyists, we want to know how it all goes together. This screenshot is from Richard Ross, who tested the alkalinity monitor on his tank to see how it, how it would perform. This is the Apex Classic dashboard. And here's the Apex Fusion graph. For a skeptical guy, he was very impressed with how well it tracked his Reese alkalinity over a period of a few days. So if this is measuring at 7.81 right now, then I could grab my ELOS test kit and I could somehow get a sample of this water and I could try and see if I'm close to that with my kit, right? Go for it, yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna try that. Brand new kit, never been opened. And we gotta somehow get water out of that beaker into that syringe. Okay. I know, you're uh, like, how are you gonna do that? We'll do it this oh, way. Oh, that's a great looking mug. Yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna need five milliliters. Yeah. Not even gonna rinse the vial. They always say rinse the vial three times in tank water. I'm not doing that. You can't make me. And the ELOS kit doesn't measure um, like that degree. It doesn't go to 7.8. It's either 7.5 or it's 8.0. So I'm just going to grab that twice. My five milliliters. Make sure I'm getting it right. Now that's some precision right there. Kind yep. Right? Yep. Five milliliters. There we go. And so the way the uh, ELOS test kit is, it's every drop is half a dKH. Okay. So that's why I said I can't get to 7.8. And you've got a white background. That's there perfect. We go. One, two. So you have to shake. It's horrible. I like your device already. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 10 is 5 dKH. 11, 12. I get more white. I got more all your other colors. What number did I say? 12? That was 13. <laughs> 13, thank you. 14. 15. 16. So that's right at 8 dKH. And it's in this test, it's as it changes to yellow. So yep. we're right at that color. There you go. All right. So it is very close to your device. And I had no <coughs> reason to think your device is not accurate. Mm -hmm. I was just curious, you know, because we are using hobbyist kits. Right. And now you've got a device here on the market that is going to be super calibrated. And then you believe every two months it has to be calibrated or monthly or... Well, that's a good I know question. it's very new. Exactly, so yeah. It, it's very new. Hard to know. And <laughs> so I haven't been able to quantify that yet. Okay. But what I anticipate, it's going to be a very infrequent thing. It's going to be on the order of, of months yeah. uh, to, to, you know, for the calibration. Does it have a brain? Does it have like a motherboard, RAM? Yeah, there's like a microcontroller in there. So it stores the data in there? Or the controller stores the data? The controller stores the data right now. Again, in this really early prototype, uh, there are, are tons of options for you know, it being able to, to record and graph data or whatever. But, but right, now, right now, I just wanted to keep its job really simple. Yeah, yeah, Analyze, yeah. report to the controller. Yeah. The only reason I asked is because I thought, well, if it's got a brain in it, and it could say, you know, like your phone, you open your phone and says, hey, you need to download the new iOS. And mm -hmm. I thought the thing could say, you need to calibrate. It's time. Like, I've done a thousand tests. I right. want to be calibrated. I don't know if it has the brain to do that. It, point. it does. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. It, could, it could do that. Okay, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. That way it kind of just says, I'm not going to do anything until you've calibrated me. It's on the feature enhancement list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. That was a great idea, right? Yep. All right. Anything else you can tell us? Oh, do you have a ballpark of what you think this may retail at some point? I know that, since you made it yourself, it's like a billion dollars. Right. Because yeah. you had to make one. No, that it's a little bit too early. Again, this is Even to a very that. crude prototype. We're in very, very early stages of this. 
Um, I, of course, the main reason I'm here at MACNA, aside from showing this to the world, is showing it to a number of companies that express interest in this. Yeah. And so uh, it's too early to discuss price. Oh, so you might become a millionaire and they're just going to buy it and they make it. No, I don't know about the millionaire part, but... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for doing the demo. Right, well, That's thanks. very interesting. I loved following this on Facebook when it was just in its inception, and mm -hmm. you've been showing graphs for some time now, showing how precise it can be. Yeah. And uh, I, I do want to throw one thing out here, yeah, go ahead. which is that <clears throat> in talking to a lot of people, they say, well, yeah, Jim, that's great, but who needs that kind of precision that often? That's nuts. Why? You know, why? Right. Um, so I have an anecdote or two that might shed light into that. Sure. Um, so... I've been monitoring this on my tank for you know a few months now, mm -hmm. and um, well, for one thing, let me back up and set the stage. I have a 210 gallon display, mm -hmm. and I'm dosing Randy's recipe number one yeah. 24 seven constantly. So I see a daily alk swing on my tank mm -hmm. of about 0.2 dKH. Mm -hmm. In the daytime, when the lights are on, the corals are calcifying, they're consuming, alk's dropping a little bit, and at night, it comes back up. Mm -hmm. And there's this really smooth, predictable swing that happens every day. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, I went to the local fish store and I brought home a couple of small corals, mm -hmm. dipped them, put them in the tank. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I had my hands in the water, I did a little bit of aquascaping, really minor stuff, moved a coral or two. Yeah. There was a montipora that was threatening a neighbor, so I broke a chunk off. Mm -hmm. And then you know, went about my business. Uh, kept an eye on the alkalinity uh, just to see what effect this, I might be able to you know, notice with this. Yeah. And immediately, this is the, the part of the day where the graph's going down, right? right? And immediately, the graph leveled off. Hmm. And within minutes, I could see a response. Uh, my theory is, is that the, the new corals that I introduced were throwing off chemicals that had, had, were shocking the other corals, that they were affecting the other corals. Don't, don't take enough of yeah. Well, yeah, that it, that it, that it, shut, it kind of shut the calcification of the system down. Yeah. So I turned my dosing off and decided that I would wait until I saw things return to normal before mm -hmm. I turned the dosing back on. And it took almost a whole day. It took something around 21 hours before I saw the alkalinity start to drop again and I turned the dosing back on. Right. And so, again, that's mere anecdote. Um, is yeah. I've not been able to do any scientific tests of any kind yeah. of this, but I believe that, that uh, if you were to choose to measure your alkalinity like I have been, that you can start seeing some amazing things in your tank that have never been visible before. You've never been, we have never had that visibility into what's happening with the alkalinity in our tanks. So did you catch this point that by measuring so frequently, at least in this ex one example, he discovered when coral stopped uptaking alkalinity and when they resumed? Something that we never discussed, but maybe you've noticed during this video, is that sometimes that roller goes one direction and sometimes it goes the other. It's because it's either moving fluid into the system or it's pumping fluid out. So what goes in has to come out, it has to change directions. So one pump is doing everything with this device. I'm glad you opened that up because the fact is, is that in the past, if I grab my test and I do it, I write down my results and then I'm done until I break the t test out again. Mm -hmm. And I just stare at the corals, look at the tank, and I'll walk past the tank a hundred times a day. Yep. And then, you know, I finally go check my tank again because I'm... I've been lazy and suddenly my alkalinity is way off. My calcium reactor has put in way too much. I mean, earlier this year it was at 22 dKH. Yep. Your, your machine would have gone, what are you doing? Because it's constantly measuring and it would be a, I'd be much more on top of it. And we don't have a, a uh, electronic test for alkalinity. So this is awesome. Yep. Because we do pH, we do ORP, we do salinity, mm -hmm. and then everything's test kits. Right. So having something like that tied into your system to where, and on, on this prototype, you basically have it at a glance, or maybe you can pull it up on your controller possibly. In, in your Apex, do you have some kind of a, a widget that you put in there to show you your number? I, would, How are you uh, reading that number? Because I said, you be, said it was again, like a pH measurement. Yeah, it's, it, I, I, on my dashboard, right, on dashboard. I've relabeled one of my pH probes, ALK. And, nice. Okay, and okay. there you go. That's what I was trying to understand. How you're yeah. doing. I'm still trying to figure out the connection. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to be that dumb. It's just Sunday morning. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> Too much Mac now, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's it. I'm excited. Yep. I'm curious to see what it ends up being price point wise. I mean, of course, anyone would be. But way to go on your progress so far. I was really excited, and I'm glad you were able to get it done in time for the show. All Thanks right. so much. Thank you. All right. After all that, the hardest part to get out of gym was how does the Apex do anything with this information? And I asked him for a screenshot of the actual programming, basically the if-then command. So here's his code. 
And what's happening here is if the alkalinity is greater than 8.0, it shuts off the doser that is feeding alkalinity to the tank. So if you had an alkalinity system, a uh, two-part system, and you were trying to add alkalinity, it would disable that pump until the number drops below 8.0. He also added a line that if it's ever less than 7.1, don't dose alkalinity because something's not right with the alkalinity monitor. So that's smart programming, and it's a good way to protect yourself. This same principle should work with a calcium reactor. Perhaps you would control whether to allow the effluent to drain into your tank or not from the reactor's output. That's kind of it at this point. And obviously there's more to come as this gets further and further toward a complete product that we can purchase commercially. So what do you think? I really want to hear your comments on this one. I'm pretty excited about this gizmo and I'm looking forward to seeing what the commercial price will be. It seems very simple to connect up to whatever controller you're using, Apex, Cerebra, etc. And then once you've got that control, you'll have the ability from your smartphone or from your computer or your iPad to turn things on and off. I have a saying about how fun this hobby is, but this is a great example of how fun it truly is for me. Getting to check out the latest items becoming available is super exciting. If you went to Macna this year, what was your favorite thing to see? Comment below. And if you're new, please subscribe and like this video. I'm releasing a new video every week. And how on earth did I miss this? This is actually our 101st video. There's 100 videos on this channel. I didn't even know it until today. And in the past month, we've picked up another 1,000 subscribers. And I met a whole bunch of you at Macna this year. So thanks so much for stopping by to say hi.